VLSI data conversion circuits lecture 19. In the last class, we saw that using a high gain block in, I mean, in front of the quantizer, when we place the quantizer inside a negative feedback loop, did not really work because the poles of the closed loop system were lying at z equal to minus a and uh, uh, if you want good quantization noise suppression, we wanted a to be large which will in turn mean that the pole is uh, way outside the unit circle which means that the system is unstable. So, then we said okay, we know that the signal is confined to low frequencies. So, we would be quite happy if the so called amplifier there had only a large gain at low frequency, we do not really care what it does at frequencies you know other than low frequencies. And as a case in point, we said let us try and make or choose an amplifier with an infinite gain at DC right. And uh, the first thing that comes to our mind is an integrator, where the gain at DC is in other words it has a pole at z equal to 1 all right. So, when we replaced a with 1 by 1 minus z inverse, we saw that the signal transfer function is given by 1 and the noise transfer function is given by 1 minus z inverse. The noise transfer function therefore, relates the, the effect the quantization noise has on the output sequence and uh, in the frequency domain, if we need to plot the magnitude response of this noise transfer function, what would you do? You evaluate the noise transfer function at on the unit circle as you go from 0 to pi, correct. So, if you evaluate mod n t f of e to the j omega at d c z equal to 1. So, magnitude of the noise transfer function is 0 at uh, z equal to I mean at omega equal to pi what will it be? At omega equal to pi uh, z is equal to minus 1 which means that this will go to 2. So, in other words the noise transfer function varies from 0 to to 2 like this. All right. And where is our signal band? The band of interest is only from 0 to pi by OSR and we know that after this system in other words after we do this. So, this mind you is the quantizer all right. We have just taken the quantizer and put it in a feedback loop that is all. So, this output sequence v of n is quantized as a digital sequence and what are we supposed to do after this? We need to low pass filter this with a very sharp filter whose cutoff frequency is at pi by OSR. So, in other words with that understanding therefore, we do not really worry about the fact that this gain here is much greater than 1. We are only interested in that portion of this noise transfer function which lies between 0 to pi by OSR. Okay. So, in other words we are interested in integrating the noise <coughs> after this quantization noise has been passed through a transfer function which looks like this. So, we are only interested in this part correct. So, what is the spectral density of the uh, quantization noise? <coughs> the quantization noise we have assumed to be, uh, to be white 
and therefore, it, its spectral density must be delta square by 12 spread across all the way from 0 to pi. Now, this is passed through a filter with some transfer function, correct. So, what do you think the spectral density of the noise will be after it passes through the transfer function? Delta square by 12 times mod n t f of e to the j omega, the whole square will be the spectral density of the quantization noise at the output, correct. But we know that we are going to take this and filter it with a brick wall filter going from 0 to pi by OSR. So, the noise power will therefore, be please note this is a function of frequency now. So, what should you do? You integrate this from 0 to pi by OSR. So, this gives you the in band quantization noise. Does it make sense? All right. So, And uh, what is N T f of e to the j omega? The modulus of N T f of e to the j omega is nothing but 1 minus e to the minus minus j omega, which is e to the j omega by 2 minus e to the minus j omega by 2, which is e to the minus j omega by 2 times sin omega by 2, correct. The magnitude of this, please note. I'm just going to erase this thing. This is nothing but the magnitude of e to the j omega by two minus e to the minus j omega by two, which is sine of omega by two multiplied by correct. Of course, at low frequency what is <coughs> mod n t f is approximately goes as omega correct. So, when we integrate the in band noise power, so in band noise is nothing but delta square by 12 pi integral 0 to pi over OSR times omega square d omega and this is delta square over 12 pi times pi cube by OSR the whole cube times one third. Okay. All right. So as you can see, the in-band noise is delta square by thirty-six delta square by 36 pi times pi cube by OSR cube, all right. 
So, if OSR goes up by a factor of 2, noise within the signal band goes down by a factor of 8, right, which is how many dB? Nine dB. All right. Which is how many bits? One and a half bits for, for doubling the OSI. So definitely, we seem to be doing better than. blindly low pass filtering the over sample signal right so by use of negative feedback where we take the quantizer and put it inside a feedback loop and where the so called forward amplifier has got only high gain at low frequency we see that in the signal band which corresponds to 0 to pi by osr a lot of the quantization noise has has gotten shaped or being pushed out of the signal band. Okay. You understand? So, this kind of converter is now is not only exploits oversampling, it also does what is called noise shaping. I mean, which is nothing but a fancy way of saying. As far as the noise is concerned, it's tra the transfer function from the noise to the output is what kind of filter if you think about it? It is rejecting low frequency and letting high frequency through. So, this is basically a high pass characteristic. All right. So, so that the use of feedback has essentially made the quantization noise go through a high pass filter and this is I mean so and this structure basically exploits not only noise shaping I mean not only oversampling but also negative feedback to give you noise shape where we get a significant I mean significantly higher benefit to oversampling when compared to simply low pass filtering the oversampled sequence which has been quantized right and doubling the osr gives us one and a half bits rather than simply half a bit that we are getting earlier is that clear which means therefore that if you want to make a, uh, a 6 bit quantizer look like a 10 bit quantizer what do you need to do? How much do you need to oversample by now? 4 by 1 and a half plus roughly 3. So, 2 power 3, you know 8 x oversampling is, is good enough if you implement the noise, I mean if you implement, if you place the quantizer inside a negative feedback loop where you are also shaping the noise away from the signal. A couple of uh, things I would like to draw your attention to. One what is the impulse response of uh, the noise trans I mean clearly there is a noise transfer function which means that in the time domain there is an impulse response correct. So, what is the impulse response of the NTF sequence? It is 1 minus z inverse what is the impulse response? 1 and and sorry 1 and minus 1 and after that it becomes 0. The sum of the samples must be 0 why? 
So what? The sum of the samples of the NTF impulse response must be 0 and why? Huh? No, why, why is the area 0? Yeah, the sum of samples is 0. I am asking you why is the sum of samples 0? The, the, the DC gain of the noise transfer function is 0 because of the way we have implemented the loop. Correct? If the DC gain of a transfer function is 0, it means that if you evaluate it at z equal to 1, it will be 0. In other words, the sum of the samples is 0. Okay. So, in other words, this can be written as 1 minus uh, or rather z minus 1 by z. So, where are the zeros of the noise transfer function? This has a 0 at z equal to 1 and a pole at z equal to 0. If the inverse transform of N T f of z is denoted by h of n, then sigma h of n is 0. Does this make sense? All right, this is one thing I want to point out. The next thing I want to point out is that fine, within the signal band we know that the, the quantization noise is much smaller than what we had before. But can we comment on the total quantization noise? Do you think we are doing better or worse? I mean, you might argue that it hardly matters because we are only interested finally in the in band quantization noise, but just as a matter of curiosity. The total quantization noise, which is the, I mean, what is the spectrum of the quantization noise before we get to the decimation filter? We just now said that, no, if you have this kind of noise shaping converter, how will the spectrum look at the, let me just draw that diagram again. So, let me refresh your memory and this is the input signal which has been oversampled. Then what we have now therefore, is not a high gain, but we have only a high gain at low frequencies and we have the quantizer here which we have modeled by an additive noise source and there is a delay here. Right, this is our so called noise shaped quantizer, right. And after this, the entire system, how does it look? What we must have a, a low pass filter whose corner is at pi by OSR, and then you can drop samples and so on. What I am trying to ask you is what is the spectrum at B? Let us say the spectrum at A was something like this. So, this is pi by OSR. And this is pi. What does the spectrum at B look like? It will consist of two quantities, one is the signal which has gone through a signal transfer function which is 1 
and the quantization noise which has gone through a high pass filter. So, the spectrum will look like this. Okay, this is the spectrum of the shape noise. All right. The question I want to ask you is can we comment on the mean square noise here? I mean, here we know that the mean square noise is very small, right. We have calculated that already. You get some uh, delta square by 36 pi times, you know, pi cube by OSR cube. But can you comment on the mean square noise here? That is, if I took this sequence, subtracted the input from it, what will be left? Only the shaped quantization noise. If we measure the mean square value of that, do you think it will be larger than delta square by 12 or smaller than delta square by 12? Larger? Why? So, what? Okay, so, then therefore, if you want to measure the mean square noise at the output of the noise shape converter, what we must do is therefore, integrate delta square by 12 pi integral 0 to pi n t f e to the j omega the whole square d omega. Correct, but can somebody use some clever theorem? Uh, Parseval is basically saying that one by pi integral zero to pi mod NTF whole square must be the same as sigma h square of correct. So, what must this mean which is what which is 2 all right. So, the mean square value of the quantization noise here at B is in fact greater than what you had without noise shaping. All right. In this particular example, it turns out to be twice what we had without noise shaping. Without noise shaping, you would get delta square by 12. Now, you are seeing twice that. Okay. I mean, that need not bother us because anyway, we are going to pass this through a low pass filter, which is going to clean up all this stuff outside the signal band, which is 0 to pi by OSR. Does it make sense? So, what is this square? So, where, where are we actually adding noise in the past? That it increased from delta square by 12 to from delta square by 6. No, you are taking, I mean, you uh, so as somebody pointed out, right, the transfer function is, is, uh, is not, I mean, if we did not have noise shaping, the transfer function for this quantization noise would be 1 throughout the band. And the integrated noise is proportional to the square of the transfer function, correct. Now, what are we having? The noise transfer function has got a gain of 0 at DC at, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, I am actually, my diagram is not representative because sign must look like, uh, it must look like something like, I think it will look like this, okay. Mm, no, I am sorry, uh, actually that is right, I am sorry, that is still fine. No, but uh, this is like this, okay. And uh, the gain is actually, the gain is 2, right, but what matters is the square of the gain.
Correct. Uh, what you see is that with the physical picture, we are not actually adding noise anywhere. No, we are, right? Because this is. I mean, this is where we are adding noise, all right. And if you selectively amplify it over a certain region, it means that it will get amplified more. That's all. Okay, because you're just taking this flat spectral density and passing through a high pass filter, where the gain of the high pass filter in some frequency bands is much greater than one. And what matters is actually the square of the gain, right? And when you integrate all of it, it just turns out to be. One. Okay, another way of thinking about it in the time domain is that the impulse response is 1 and minus 1. So, if you had a component of noise at omega equal to pi, omega equal to pi corresponds to a sinusoid where the next sample is the inverse of the previous sample, correct. So, noise frequencies close to omega equal to pi, right when you convolve it with an impulse response 1 comma minus 1 right will actually it takes the difference between successive samples though so that they will constructively interfere giving a power which is actually 4 times because they constructively interfere right those frequency components will give you a gain of 4 that is of course a long winded way of saying you multiply by ntf e to the j omega whole square and integrate you understand. Okay, great. So, uh, I mean, so basically, you can see that it's like taking garbage from your house and then you dump it on in your neighbor's place. That's all, right? As long as your signal band is clean, you really don't care what happens outside because you're hoping that your decimation filter will clean up everything beyond the desired signal band. Okay. And now, if you think about it, all right. So, this is uh, an integrator. So, uh, what is the integrator doing? It is summing. Okay, so this is sigma. All right, and what is the sum? Uh, what is this guy doing? It is difference, and that is delta. So this is also called a either a delta sigma or a sigma delta or a noise shaped or an over sampled converter. You understand? So, you know sigma delta, delta sigma are all used interchangeably. And since because there is a feedback loop, we call it a delta sigma loop sometimes. Okay, all these refer to the same basic structure. And basically, the delta sigma loop is associated with a signal transfer function and a noise transfer function. It is also associated with an oversampling ratio. That is the band over which you would like to integrate the quantization noise. Again, mind you, with the understanding that we have an ideal decimation filter after the delta sigma converter. Okay. Now, yet another observation I would like to bring out at this point is the fact that if you look at, if you want, if you want to find the impulse response from the quantization noise port to the output port, what will you do? I mean, apart from writing the math, if you are, for example, given this, this box in a lab and you had two input ports, right? One was the signal, one was the this port E, and you wanted to find the, the impulse response of the transfer function from the input port to the output port. What will you do? I will put an impulse and then measure the sequence which comes out. So, if I did that to find the noise transfer function, correct? If I injected an impulse here, all right, what do you think the output 
uh, sequence will be? It will be 1 minus 1, okay. Uh, the minus 1, I mean, uh, how do you get the minus 1? Because the first, the first sample that comes out must be must be 1. Why? What I am trying to point out is that the first sample that comes out of V at V must be the impulse that you injected into the port E. Why? Because you know the rest of the, uh, the feedback loop is only going to see that impulse in the next clock cycle or the next uh, 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 sampling instant. So, this output must be 0 in the beginning, correct? Right? You understand? So, regardless of what transfer function I have here, the first sample of the impulse response of the noise transfer function will always be 1. Does it make sense? All right. So, this is a very important aspect. H of 0 must always be equal to 1. Okay. Pardon? Uh, well, uh, we will come to that a little uh, going forward, but you, uh, I mean at this point one thing I can say is that I can say that H of 0 equal to 1 regardless of what there is in that regardless of what I put here, h of 0 is always equal to 1, correct. Okay. And please note that h of 0 corresponds to NTF evaluated at z equal to I mean NTF of z is h of 0 plus h of 1 z inverse plus blah 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 correct. So, h of 0 equal to 1 means what? Evaluating N T f of z equal to infinity, this must be equal to h of 0 which is which must be 1. Does it make sense? All right. So, this is uh, I mean and why is this happening? The only fundamental constraint that results in these equations is the fact that this loop must have at least one delay, correct? You understand and that is because the quantizer output is not available immediately. Right. So, the rest of the circuitry can only process that output in the next sample. This is exactly analogous to what you have been used to with finite state machines, right. There is combinational logic and there is some set of states, right. Okay. So, the, the next state is nothing but present state is some function of present state and, and input. Okay. The next state cannot be uh, cannot be a function of next state and input. You understand? 
is that clear? So, this in other words this feedback loop must have at least one delay and this constraint which quantifies that is equivalent to saying that there are no in the uh, in the literature this is what is called no delay free loops or no delay free loop in this case. Do you follow? H of 0 must be equal to 1 and in the frequency domain this corresponds to NTF evaluated at z equal to infinity being equal to 1 and what kind of filter is the NTF? It is a high pass filter. So, uh, in other words if somebody gave you a high pass filter transfer function and told you that this is an NTF, how will you uh, uh, check what is one sanity check you must do? If somebody gave you NTF of z and I mean some high pass filter of uh, transfer function right and uh, told you that this is a noise transfer function of a delta sigma modulator, one sanity check is to make sure that when you evaluate the transfer function at z equal to infinity you must get 1 right. You understand? and this is coming because of the delay free loop not being tenable all right and let me now also introduce you to some more jargon or rather some standard names for the various quantities involved this is u and uh, Going forward, it is likely that we replace this 1 by 1 minus the inverse by a more complicated block. I mean see once you tested blood you know uh, you only get greedier right you say hey you know by putting an in, uh, this in a feedback loop we seem to have gotten by putting one integrator no integrator half a bit, one integrator one and a half bits and two integrators maybe God knows right, it hopefully it is much better than one and a half bits per doubling OSR right. So, uh, you are bound to get greedy. So, in other words this is not we are not going to sit quiet with what we have. So, in general you have some L of z right and uh, this is the quantizer this is the output of the quantizer which is denoted by v and this quantity at the input of the quantizer is denoted by y okay. I mean the mnemonic to figure out uh, what is y and, and what is v is that uh, you take y and then you screw it up oh sorry and the quantizer basically messes it up and then the output is v ok. So, this is a good way of remembering this stuff. So, the input to the quantizer is y the output to the quantizer is all right and uh, then uh, one of you may argue that why should so what is going into the this block l of z is nothing but u minus v all right and uh, and one of you may argue that why should u and v see the same transfer function correct. It is perfectly legal for instance to have this where you have some contraption which takes u another contraption which takes 
V and generates L naught times U plus L 1 times V. Okay in this fashion or you say I mean because you want to in include the inversion here you put minus L 1 times V and this is just a more general form of that integrator right. So, this is often called I mean this is basically a filtering network. So, this and this sits in the loop. So, this is called the loop filter. Let me take a couple of examples of a loop filter. One, of course, is a special case. If I had L of z here, this is u, this is v, the quantization noise is modeled by an additive sequence e, this is y, this is v. So, what is the STF or the signal transfer function? I mean, uh, so one thing I have forgotten to do here is to insert the, the z inverse, okay. but then one might say I might as well push the z inverse into the, I mean I push this into this block right, and call this the loop filter instead. All right, so the z of z inverse is already pushed in is the assumption. So, in this example, what is the STF? L of z by 1 plus L of z, the NTF is 1 by 1 plus L of z, all right, and the output here will be STF times u plus NTF times e. Okay. So, in terms of uh, time domain sequences, the STF is, is 1 because you want the input signal to pass through unaffected you only want to high pass filter the noise. So, this time domain sequence will basically look like the input plus plus shape noise, you understand. E is the quantity, I mean I mean, am sorry this must be all capital use. Right. So, this must be the output sequence must look like the input plus some noise which has been high pass filter shaped a high pass filter. High pass filter means that there is a lot of gain at high frequency. So, the output waveform you can expect to be rapidly jumping up and down. Correct. So, let us take a look at couple of waveforms and compare it with what we have done before. So, this is the uh, entire system level diagram. Uh, I think I made an error here. This must be 1 by 1 minus z inverse. And this shows a sinusoid. This is only the step size is 2 in this example, the red color shows the <coughs> input sinusoid, the blue step like waveform shows the quantized sinusoid and as you can see the approximation is rather poor, correct. The this is over sampling only, whereas here on the right side, 
the input signal is still marked in red, I do not know if you are able to see it, but there is also noise shaping okay. and as we expected because the noise shaping involves high pass filtering frequency components at omega equal to pi have a gain of 2 remember. So, you can expect the output to wiggle a lot faster than what we saw in the case without noise shaping. Is that clear? In both cases there is over sampling, but this is over sampling with noise shaping. In other words, this is the output sequence of a delta sigma modulator with an NTF of 1 minus z inverse. And let us take a closer look, all right. So, this is again no noise shaping, while this is noise shaped. Is this clear? And uh, it would be instructive also to compare the reconstructed waveforms after low pass filtering. So, again red is the input which has been passed to the same low pass filter, so that I can do an A to B comparison without any delay right. And blue is the this I mean low pass filtered this is again no noise shaping all right and this is with noise shaping And do you notice anything? Or what do you notice rather? When you use noise shaping, the error is visibly smaller and you can actually see also plot it. Okay. So, in this case, this is the raw quantization noise. Okay. This is before low pass filtering, all right. After low pass filtering, you see the blue curve. This is just over sampling without any noise shaping, and as we saw last time, the mean square value of the noise is, is much smaller than what you would get with, I mean, without doing the low pass filter, all right. Now, the same curve has been plotted here. So, this is no noise shaping while the blue curve a blue waveform is the error between the input and the filtered output of the noise shaped converter and as you can see the mean square value is definitely much smaller than the the converter that we had I mean with only over sampling and no noise shape correct all right I mean uh, I guess uh, at a pinch it would be difficult to imagine that you know such a waveform right has actually a, a smaller error within the signal band when compared to say this waveform all right but it, it is true. So, in fact, uh, when we go to uh, better and better delta sigma modulators, you will find that the output waveform can look very, very messy. That makes sense because the, the gain at omega equal to pi can be very high. So, it will make the waveform look very messy, but the moment you, you smoothen it properly, the approximation to the input will be very, very good, right. And as I told you last time, 
this is a way of making a very bad quantizer look like a very good quantizer. So, you can turn the, uh, the argument upside down and say if I wanted a quantizer with a certain resolution, I can do it in two ways. One, I can actually build a quantizer with that resolution or I can use the principles of oversampling and noise shaping and make a very bad quantizer look like a, like a quantizer whose resolution I am shooting for. Okay. In the absolute limit, you can, you can go on increasing the oversampling ratio and do noise shaping and make the loop quantizer, which is the quantizer inside the delta sigma loop poorer and poorer and poorer. Right? This does not mean eventually that you remove the quantizer. Okay. The, the, the easiest you can do is make a 1 bit quantizer and it turns out that this is routinely done in, uh, in systems where you take a 1 bit quantizer, use oversampling, noise shaping with appropriate loop filters okay, and make it look like an incredibly uh, precise quantizer maybe 14, 15 bits. So, it is like saying I have a scale 15 bits is one part in 32,000 right. So, and one bit is you know one part in 2 correct. So, it is like saying I have a scale which is only precise to 1 meter right, but I want to use it to measure a distance of 1 by you know 1 by 32000 meters which is 0 0.03 millimeters you understand how can you do this if i had multiple instances of this small quantity i want to measure one thing i could do is stack up many of these guys right use the ruler to measure it and then i'll you know and stacking up if I had multiple instances of the same unit that I want to measure is equivalent in signal processing terms to have a sequence which does not change or changes very slowly. Okay. So, we will get into the uh, now that you have a basic idea we will get into the details in the next class. <laughs>